Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Janan. I am a faculty at the Media Lab, and our group is located at the fourth floor uh, of this building. And uh, first, uh, I will tell you a little bit about our group name. It's called Conformable Decoders. As a group, we believe that we live in an ocean of physical patterns, heartbeats, respiration, neuronal activity, temperature change, and so on. And all these physical patterns contain information in coded ways. And as a group, we would like to decode these physical patterns and try to understand how our body is um, talking to us. And decoders are mainly our devices. These devices can have intimate integration with any curvy body parts of yourself and translate these biological patterns into electrical language so that we can cre create a smart uh, interface between patients and medical doctors. Overall, in our group, we do not only specifically target one single organ, whereas we have a bold dream and we would like to target many organs via our wearable, implantable, and attachable devices and try to understand how these body parts are talking to us. Imagine you have an implantable device in your deep brain which reads your neuronal potential. But at the same time, imagine that you have an ingestible pill, electronic pill in your stomach, which can tell the pH and mortality change at the same time. So these two organs can systematically, in a system level, can talk to each other, and we can make better treatment methodologies which are not currently available in daily life. Um, in the coming slides, I will... Um, and of course, we do all this mechanically adaptive, flexible, stretchable electronic devices in a special lab, which is called Yellow Box. Because uh, yellow is not only my favorite color, it's also we need this yellow color because we use UV sensitive polymers and we need to block all the UV lights, which make our clean room looks like a yellow color like this. And the feature size of our devices are so tiny, that's why we don't want any dust particle to be a part of the device, otherwise the devices will not be functional. So we cannot just do our experiment in regular labs and regular rooms. We use very special environment with the help of HEFA filters that we have on the top of the ceiling of our clean room so that we can have limited dust particles in the lab to do our special experiments. And this is how we look like, like minions in the clean room. You can now recognize who is who. And this is, maybe we can lower down the volume a little bit. This is how we do our experiments. We first wear special clothes, like bunny suits, so that we can block all the particles coming from our clothing. And we go inside the clean room as a cohort. We work as a body system, because we use really very sensitive polymers and strong acids, so we don't want any safety problem to occur in our lab. And we mainly use traditional microfabrication tools, but we hack them for our evolving research needs. We use traditional mask aligners, but we use them for pick and place tools, especially for brittle ceramic materials. And we make these devices in stretchable and flexible formats so that they can have very intimate connection with any curvy parts of yourself and gather all the information in an effective way and create big data. And while using this data, we use machine learning to come up with new ways um, for body language to tell us. Today's electronics uh, are stiffer up to six orders of magnitude compared to soft tissue that we have in our body. So when you want to integrate this hard electronics, planar hard electronics, with your soft body, there are few challenges in mechanics mismatch and geometrical form mismatch. Since we cannot change the biology yet, we change the electronic devices. Given that we have limited time, I'll just highlight three of our projects and tell their main purposes. The first project is about heart. We created a malleable device which can be laminated on your internal organs such as heart beats, heart, lungs, and diaphragm to generate electricity through the piezoelectricity. We are core materials for our devices based on the piezoelectric materials. So whenever they are deformed, they can produce voltage and current. And we can use this electrical power to power our biomedical devices. 
For instance, for pacemaker, we have to change this every six to seven years due to the depleted battery. But with our technology, we can harness the mechanical energy from our internal organs and feed the uh, uh, electronics accordingly. Right now, we also work on a uh, variable fashion of the same device platform at the Media Lab, where we use these devices on your joints, such as knee, or we embed them in our textile, such as uh, your trousers or underwear. Whenever you walk, you daily, during your daily activities, you create the electronic power. You also use this to track your gait so that you can understand your neuronal activity with implantable device, but at the same time you can check your gait mortality and it can tell the state of your Parkinson's disease. We work with clinical uh, doctors and we try our devices on uh, Parkinson's patients. The other device is an ingestible pill that you can just, kind of a fantastic voyage. The device can travel all the way from your mouth well to the other end without uh, uh, involving any scoping or prodding involved. And you can take this device because our devices are flexible, so you can roll them and place in a dissolvable capsule. Via endoscopy, you can lower it down from mouth to the GI and the dissolvable capsules dissolves away and the device opens up and stick on a stomach lining. And given that we have piezoelectric component on our device, whenever you eat, whenever you drink, this device will give you a voltage output as a function of the food that you intake. So this is simply a Fitbit for your stomach. This is also a nice way to understand how the mortality is functioning and happening with the implantable device that you have in your deep brain. So I'll skip this uh, because we don't have enough time. Um, and the next device is an implantable device. This time it's not wearable, it's perfectly implantable. And we go inside the deep brain. It's called MINDS, Minimally Invasive Neuronal Drug Delivery System, which is a needle type structure which can go inside the deep brain and can be remotely controllable with micro pumps to infuse multiple drugs on demand. Why we do that? If you have Parkinson's disease, you need to take the drugs orally or intravenously, which is unnecessarily affecting your whole body. But with this device, we infuse picoliters of drugs on demand, but at the same time, we read out the neuronal potential to create a closed-loop system, so we infuse whenever we need it. We also, given that we are inside the brain, we can change the behavior of the animals within seconds by just sending in smart code through our computer, so we can let the animal turn right or left, run and stop by simple codes that we send from our computers. So this is a um, tiny video that we created. And again, we work with medical doctors at MGH, uh, as well as at Koch Institute and McGovern Brain Institute, including my students at the Media Lab. This is a device which has very tiny components. These components are thinner than your hair fiber, so you cannot hold them by hands. That's why we use microscope and mask aligners in clean room to assemble them all together in a very tiny stainless steel tube with a diameter of 150 micrometer. And this needle can allow us to go inside the brain with, with no minimal deflection so that we can target a specific location inside the brain to infuse multiple drugs on demand. And we use uh, two different micro pumps for two different drugs. And with the help of this remotely controllable micro pumps, even though your doctor is away, it can send the code to your, com from your, his computer and then infuse the drugs on demand. And given that we do microfabrication, we make these devices larger for uh, large animal models such as macaques or eventually for human beings and smaller for rat models. And we can, we, because we have a tiny structure in our internal uh, infusion cannula, we can create a very organized and well-defined bolus areas inside the deep brain. For this specific application, we target a special location inside the brain which is called Substantia nigra and we infuse muscomol to, make the to, make, to have the device to create a hemi-Parkinsonian stage. With the, with the uh, muscomol infusion, as seen here, sorry, it's a little bit graphic, you can make the animal to turn and right and left and you can change this turning points, number of turns, or the interval between the turns by just infusing different types of drugs or different uh, infusion periodicity through your device. Not only little animals, we also use these devices for large animals such as macaques. And by infusing different drugs, we can fire the neuronal activity or we can silence it with ACSF or Moscomol. 
And uh, first time ever in the literature, we demonstrated that we can infuse two different distinctive drugs inside a large animal model, macaque, and create sub-millimeter cubic volumes to infuse picoliters of drugs, which are six orders of magnitude smaller that you take orally or intravenously. So you decrease the systemic toxicity really so well. And with this, uh, I would like to thank all, all of you and uh, for listening um, and also my students and collaborators. Thank you.